So, it stands for Rio. Okay, thank you very much for being here. This is the 24th uh, Philosophy Unicino Symposium, but it's the first one, uh, at least to my knowledge, on philosophy of religion. And it was, uh, it went well beyond our expectation. We received some missions from uh, Europe, from the North, uh, North America, South America. We have keynote speakers from uh, all over the world, really. And uh, also from eight, nine different time frames, which made the thing somewhat challenging to organize. But, you know, I'm very glad that uh, you guys are all here. So uh, it's a three days conference. We have three sections, one section starting from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Then a second session and a third session in the afternoon. It will start at 2 and it will end at uh, 4 p.m. And then a second one from uh, 5 till 6.30 a.m. And then the final one, it will be at 7.30 up till uh, 9.30. So thanks again for being here. As I said, we are on a tight schedule. We received a number of uh, amazing uh, submissions. So without further ado, let me introduce our first keynote speaker for today, which is Professor Felicio Feiler from Unicinus. So he holds a PhD in philosophy from the Pontifical uh, Catholic University of uh, Rio Grande do Sul. He was a visiting uh, researcher at Georgetown University. He is professor of philosophy and he works on the following topics Nietzsche, Hegel, morals, conscience, and Christianity. He's a member of uh, the Academic Council of Studia Egizioniana, is a part of the scientific editorial team of Philosophy Study Journal, is a member of the editorial board of the Intuition Journal and London Journal Plus, is an affiliate member of Friedrich Nietzsche Society and GT and uh, GT uh, group from Ampofi. Today he's going to talk about the death of God between the radicalization and the overcoming of nihilism. Please welcome Professor Adilson Feller. Thank you. The microphone is disconnected, Adilson. Excuse me. Um, good morning to everyone. Thank you to Professor Nicola for the invitation in this uh, international colloquium. The topic of my presentation is a part of my research. For this reason, I will show the screen in this time. Okay. The title of my speech is The Death of God Between the Radicalization and Overcoming of Nihilism a contemporary interpretation of religion based in Nietzsche's considerations about atheism of modernity. The main problems of my presentation is the nihilism and the values, both of them linked by the death of God. The radicalization of nihilism what extent the radicalization of nihilism with all the mechanisms that come from it is in base of search to overcome of moral modernity conceived as the empire of rational moral having in the Christian God is more over expression. The phenomenon of atheism in modernity, the phenomenon that God is become meaningless the exhaustion of meaning of God, the radicalization of nihilism, submitting the problem of nihilism to the rigid of value, radicalization of nihilism, disposition of joyful acceptance to faith, overcoming the nihilism. Overcoming the nihilism, we have Different positions on how nihilism should be accepted. Resignations, passive nihilism, and affirmation, active nihilism. Nihilism is theoretically possible through the nihilistic institutions created by society, but is psychology impossible 
since these nihilistic social structures function as distractions that prevent one from thinking about nihilism. Not thinking about nihilism. This impediment represents an instinctive resistance that creates new values, not allowing one to think of nihilism in order not to become depressed and create nothing. The individual constituted by the theoretical basis enabled to live in this modern world because the nihilistic is not able to affect him psychology. Psychological institutions is based on instantaneous units of fullness forces, not on this distractions of morality. The Christian element from the perspective of Christianity was no longer a problem. It was already death. The institution represented by the Church of the Renaissance, the Church of the Borgia, with all its apparatus of beauty, which in itself is nihilistic, helped to fulfill a role of distraction, preventing one from thinking about nihilism. The overcoming of nihilism means an affirmative psychological disposition, overcoming the fact of nihilism by the death of God, overcoming the values pertaining to it, creating new values beyond the moral standards of good and evil. The first step of my presentation is from plurality to sickness, from life to death, God died. Among Nietzsche's analysis of the culture of the ancient Greeks, considered by him as springtime of human culture, his politism stands out and as a representative sign of this diverse range of divinities. Nietzsche elects Apollo and Dionysius as the two great representatives of the immense plurality to which the artist dispositions of humanity are established. Ancient Greek, like the regions of ancient Greek universe, all other forms of polytheism are also marked by movement, openness, simplicity, innocence, freedom, and play. The Oedipus Ray, as the challenges become more tense and apparently incapable to being overcome, the great the quantum of force that arises for the search of overcoming them. As in the case of the tragedy of Oedipus Ray, abandonment was not enough from the son Oedipus by the parents Laius and Jocasta. Greek politism tradition faced with the plurality of gods that characterized the Greek politism tradition. Tragedy is drawn as the quest to assume responsibility in the midst of fate, however dark and terrifying. Effective protagonism and forces. The human being in this tragic context has such an effective protagonist to the point of implying the maximum strength he has in order to overcome. For that, dating on your conscience beyond the positive laws is fundamental. The monotheism tradition, according to the, this tradition, human beings are governed by a law detected by a single God. In this way, human life is committed to fulfilling the law, which constitutes the center of human life. Oedipus Ray in the tragedy of Joseph. While in the account of the great tragedy, there is all the emotion and anguish coming from discovery that Oedipus 
is the son of the one he's become a murderer, having to face with conscience the, conse the consequence of his actions, which will lead him to a tragic fate. In Joseph's tragedy, despite all the emotion that arise from the encounter of Joseph's brothers with the one of when they become guilty of his disappearance, there is a conformism on the part of Joseph when he affirms that his brothers were nothing more than instrument of God. Everything focused in God's responsibility. Monotheism. The human being is blocked from his responsibility to spend a maximum of change for his actions to submit the status of a monotheist God. What results from this is nothing but death, since there can only by life, as long as human forces can be act activated. To what extent does monotheism resist the invictus of modern science? This question, we open the second step the radicalization of nihilism as the post god science. If life is force, then it can only assert itself insofar as it counts on op opposing points of constitutions beyond a predetermined monolithic form. The posture of the human being that is inferred from the religion prof professed among the ancient Greeks is one of struggle and the greater of obstacles presented by the anguish and apparent impossibility of solution. The greater of amount of force is spent in order to take the reins of destiny. Scientific advances in the face of scientific advances, human beings were emancipated from various structures that imprisoned them. As in the, ca the case of those that are inferred from religion in a special way from to one marked by the monotheism, human beings begin to become aware for their condition of enigment in order to unravel the different enigmas that make up the world of which they belong. If, on the one hand, science represents the advent of reason and enlightenment, this putting into question those values advocated by Christian morality of a supreme and immortal God. On the other hand, the advent of science represents the flowering of rational truth, calling into question a type of truth based on the belief of God who holds moral truth. The result on both sides of the question is represented in the iconographic proclamation of the death of God. It is not about the death of the gods, the gods as they would be Pen, Zeus, Odin, but of the God, of the God, which reveals above all the death of an entire religious tradition's monotheism. Science is proof that this reality, God, no longer makes any sense remains out of the question. God and science are two such op opposite realities that it is enigmatical of receive of them together in any considerations of the world of life. Faced with the drama of the radicalization of nihilism, Human beings are required to establish some reality that can constitute meaning. However, 
the meaning based on new bases, no longer those referring to a disavoided dis moral entity, but to a source of reflections that takes into account all sorts of experience that emanated from the world of life. What way of reflections can be translated from Nietzsche's writings that point to this overcoming of nihilism? In this three uh, step, we have some considerations from overcoming nihilism to nostalgia for a lost paradise, the dream of the golden age. <laughs> the dream of the golden age inspires the search of overcoming difficulties. However, remote it may appear, it is a search in which all their strength is committed with a maximum effort. In the novel, The Teenager, the 21-year-old Dostoevsky faces a big problem that consciously and unconsciously tortures his entire life, the question of the existence of God. The nihilism symptom that surrounds this young man's life reveals a proof psychology disintegration in front of which he launches himself in search of overcoming it. The situation opened us in abyss of loneliness at the same time as an infinite thirst of, for power. The human being's redemption is carried out in lonely desert. Redemption is overcoming. It is a determining and tireless search to conquer fullness in the middle of absence, lack, and nothingness. Nietzsche not only sees nihilism and sees it as a problem, but above all, glimpses this possibility of overcoming it. This enterprise of overcoming nihilism is carried out from the group where the values that supported the culture were established, especially those referring to Christianity, in which the monotheistic gods plays a, a fundamental role. The overcoming of nihilism was constituted within this conjecture, dominated by the past god and, and the present antidote. The values that were supported by morals were, according to the philosophy, those responsible for not loving, not living, which has resulted in this de degeneration. But both in the human and cultural spheres. It reminds therefore to review this role drawn so that other values can emerge from a new ground beyond that of morality. The obstacle of overcoming no longer exists. He died. God is death. It is interesting to note that Nietzsche uses the expressions this God. That is, is not God with a capital letter, but God with a small letter. And it is that God that is a specific God. Therefore, it is a God in which particular properties resi reside, in addition to those that characterize God in general. Nietzsche calls for the death of the particular God, a God responsible for the belittling of men, making it is impossible for him to overcome himself. The God on the cross represents nothing other than the excusioner of the human being. For looking off the cross is the blame for a crime from which there is no way to redeem himself. Faced with the wind of the unpayable debt, Human beings can only resign themselves of reign of by guilt, submitting to the orders of this powerful predator, the moral god of continues to live in the form of a bad conscience, 
causing resentment. In the sphere of the buy-on of men, God is no longer monotheist or scientific dogmatist because God has culmination moments, being in is an eternal deification. This God, therefore, is man himself, but not just any man, but the bion of man, the one who surfaces himself by reaching the maximum of his power capacity. For the considerations, overcoming nihilism is not just about affirming that God is death, but much more than that, it consists in verifying the reasons that lead to his death and realizing that the reality that once ruled human life in all its dimensions, it no longer makes sense by establishing a single God. Typical of the Jewish Christian culture, the entire plurality of gods that inhabited the ancient Greek world is trampled on the foot. With this, a frontal war against life is declared. Since each ancient Greek deity bears the slogan of an artist and soul disposition that is characteristic of the inclination of each human being. The two examples represented the tragedies of Oedipus and Joseph reveal fundamental aspects. While Joseph's tragedy leads to confirms in the face of a plan done up by God, the monotheistic God, therefore, before one, nothing can be done. The tragedy of Oedipus presents the commitment of a maximum of forces represented by the variety of divinities if we wills to overcome. With the advent of modern science, the monotheistic God is reborn in the form of a new true, scientific true. With this, he echoes the words of the madman when he asks where God is and then points out men as those responsible for his death because of the scientific attitude. If, on the one hand, the monotheistic God is reborn due to the dogmatic aspect typical of modern science, on the other hand, God, God dies. The polytheistic God the one who represented the soul dispositions of the human being for wolves, confluency he gives birth to the responsible forces for the life. Overcoming nihilism, which dominates throughout modernity, points to the golden age of those who threw themselves in the cause of existence, a feminine, a morphati, in order to have a maximum of forces, which in their fullness allow them to assert the life in the human being as by young man. For your attention, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Adilso. Uh, challenging and interesting uh, talk. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So now, thanks again. So now we have room for questions. Uh, if you want to make a question, so you can either raise your hand using uh, Teams or you can write them in the chat and. Uh, if you don't feel confident uh, with your English, you can write them in Portuguese and I can translate them for you. So, any questions? I have two, actually, but, you know, maybe it would be better to... 
Perguntas? <laughs> okay. I have a couple of questions actually. Uh, the first question would be like, uh, which is not clear to me as a reader of Nietzsche, you know, uh, it's if he has, uh, I mean, at times it seems that Christianity for him is like the epitome of nihilism. It's like a complete nihilistic uh, religion from the very beginning. Outside it seems that there are some figures that he thinks uh, are non-nihilistic. And I was thinking, about, I wanted to ask you, whether Nietzsche has always been like a Nietzsche judgment on Christianity, like as a pure nihilistic religion, or if there were times or some figures in Christianity who were non-nihilistic? And this is my first question. And the second question is, uh, as we are in an international uh, setting, and of course Nietzsche was more concerned with uh, Christianity, with the more uh, Judeo-Christian monotheism, let's say. But it always interested me that there were some uh, readers of Nietzsche, especially René Guénon, that converted to Islam also after reading. So I was thinking maybe he wrote anything uh, on uh, Islam or on other forms of monotheism. And if so, whether his judgment was more, uh, I don't know, uh, less uh, severe than his uh, judgment on Christianity. And uh, what do you think about it? If there is some, uh, everything that he wrote or if your judgment on uh, Islam was uh, less uh, severe. So two questions. Is Christianity always, has always been nihilistic or just uh, like uh, the, the Christianity of his times? And the second question is whether he wrote anything or what was his uh, judgment on like uh, another monotheism, which is Islam. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nicola, for the questions. Uh, I try to answer these two questions. The first one, what time of nihilistic Nietzsche is, in fact? The nihilism in Nietzsche is uh, appearing in all things, especially in the religion. And what type in the religions, what kind of the religions uh, we have symptoms of nihilism? In Nietzsche, the main problem is the moral Christianity. Okay. The moral Christianity, and because in the tradition of Christianity, we have one main point of in this tradition, is monotheism. This is the main problem in Nietzsche, the monotheism tradition, Christianism. Because we have a God with a judge. You can see the God just all things. We have no space of the human being appearing. Okay. For this reason, Nietzsche uh, overcoming it with the Greek traditions, the ancient Greek traditions, because we have plurality of gods, many gods. We don't have many forces of morality. This is the, the, the first problem, the main problem uh, in Nietzsche uh, in the tradition of Christianity the tradition of um, moral, the moral tradition. This is the main problem. And the second questions about uh, the tradition, other traditions as uh, you show the tradition of uh, Islam tradition, uh, Iceland tradition, well, uh, Nietzsche, uh, express in his writings about the tradition, the, the other traditions, um, uh, Buddhism, for example, mm -hmm. it, a very good example of the tradition, uh, the religion traditions, because the Buddhism is a tradition without moral. Excuse me, the tradition of? Moral, moral traditions oh, yeah. as a tradition and in Christianity tradition. We don't have one God as a judge. Yeah. It's determine all things you need to, to need to 
um, to have, to have free, but we have some things uh, is very interesting. Nietzsche uh, expressed in Antichrist. He says something like that. <clears throat> Christianity, Buddhism is too close. It's mm -hmm. Tradition is too close. Close? Similar in many things. In tradition, in Christianity tradition, we can uh, expect something. We have the final. We have uh, one point we need to look for. Yeah, the part that I said. Yes, you can have a, a point you can look for. But in Buddhism tradition, you don't have this point. Because you live in this time, just in this time, this time is the fullness. The, the faith, you need to embrace the faith. The faith is hard. Many difficulties you can suffer during this journey, in this life, in this faith. But you need to accept with love. For this reason, we have the formula. Um, Amor Fati. Amor Fati express this... Um, feeling of Nietzsche have uh, so about nihilism. For this reason, a tradition, the religion traditions, Buddhism is a very good example to overcoming nihilism because nihilism is a faith, but you have to embrace with all your forces the faith. Without resignations, for the reason we have two kinds of nihilism: nihilism and nihilism. So, excuse me if I interrupt. So, the the, ori the origin of nihilism is basically in the thought of the afterlife. This is yeah. the thing. This is this the main idea. So, both in Judaism, which, by the way, is not even that clear whether uh, Judaism, especially at the time of Christ, was uh, on afterlife. So as uh, at least, I mean, Buddhism has this idea of uh, like reincarnation. So the main thought of nihilism is like forgetting about uh, uh, the actual, the world and the going uh, straight, and which is yeah. common to Judaism, Christianity, and I see. Uh, ah, another question that uh, if you don't mind me asking, I remember uh, a passage in uh, the Antichrist, like the last uh, passage, which is uh, more critical of Lutheranism mm -hmm. than of Catholicism. Instead, he says like that Lutheranism is like the more poisonous uh, of all, while Catholicism. And I was wondering whether you, I mean, is there a butad or if he, I mean, I'm not saying that he was uh, like more sympathetic, but why he was more sympathetic or at least less. Uh, uh, severe when it comes to Catholicism, which that passage has always been kind of unclear to me. I mean, it's the Antichrist, which is one of the less clear <laughs> works of Nietzsche, I mean, it was, was one of the, his last works. So, whether you could say something about this, and yeah. then if someone has questions, you know, I would be pleased. Okay, it's about Lutherans. Uh, Nietzsche is Lutheran, he suffered many things about these traditions. His father, his grandfathers were, were Lutheran. He lived in this atmosphere. This atmosphere is too close, too moral. For this reason, Nietzsche discussed with his internal life. For this reason, he um, would like to express in his writing the main problem of Christianity. We have two steps in this journey of Christianity. The first one is Paulus. The mm -hmm. Paulus is the first great moral person in the Christian tradition. In Paul, Paulus of Tarsus. Paul, and yes, Tarsus. Paul of Tarsus. And another one is 
Luther. Luther is the second. Um, we have uh, the example of the great member of represented by a uh, moral in the Christian tradition. For this reason, he preferred the Catholic traditions, <laughs> but he joked about that. I think you, you, you saw in the presentation when I mentioned the tradition of Borgia, <laughs> yes, mm. in the Christian, in the Catholic traditions. Oh, these joyful traditions, the Church of Borgia. Oh, it's a joke. <laughs> Please. Oh, it's please. A completely joke. Like, uh... Yeah. <laughs> the, the, but he preferred that because in that tradition, God, that, yes, God declared that we don't have space, any space for, for God. But the the monk Luther uh, tried to have ed the one one more time that God was died. Yes, this is the problem. <laughs> so he felt like the church of this yeah. you know, mundanity and the hearts and uh, the church yeah. of this worst, let's say. To him, it was at least like uh, the best because he was uh, totally not concerned with the afterlife. Uh, mm -hmm. The more mundane the church was, the better. Mm -hmm. The Borgia is like the epitome of the unchristian Christianity, and this is why he preferred it to Lutheranism. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, it makes sense because it was so mundane and so concrete in a way that it was against this uh, afterlife. I think there are more questions, but you know, there are other people who want to talk. Thank you very much. Uh, but that is okay. Oh, Diego, do you want to, to talk or I can read? Uh, okay. Let me read for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you see it in the chat? Okay, I would like to hear more from the speaker about Nietzsche's underlying problem, which is about the truth of religious discourse and science. Doesn't Nietzsche part of the same assumption as the realitas, Plato, and skeptics? That is, try to sustain explanations about reality and morals of an unquestionable rational foundation. Could it be that the holistic and empiricist moral view of the foundation will not solve the problem and the nihilistic posture? Well, thank you very much. Okay. Interesting question. Thank Please. you, Diego, for the, the question. Um, about uh, the question of truth, of religion, discourse in science is the question you pose. Look, uh, the, the main problem of science and the Nietzsche uh, thinking is about the science become the religion. Science have the same uh, problems of the religions had in the past time. For this reason, the human being change religion of another religion. <laughs> the another religion is a science. He proclaimed another truth. This is the main, the main problem, okay? And uh, the madman, the passage of the madman, did you remember uh, in the guy's science, uh, the madman, the woman local, <laughs> uh, proclaimed God is death. God is death. Oh, look, <laughs> because God is death, because we don't have more space of this kind of death, of God. We have another God. The another God is the science. If another uh, symbols, uh, uh, another movements, another ways the God has in the past time, in the past tradition. For this reason, the problem persists. The problem of nihilism. But the main problem in Nietzsche is overcoming of this is a very good question yeah, because uh, I tried in my speech express some 
questions, some points about how Nietzsche would like overcoming the nihilism. One kind you have, uh, one point to have, one suggestion you have about that question is about the foundation another world. Another foundation. The new tradition is the new tradition is founded by uh, uh, ancient Greeks. And for this reason, ancient Greek have the religion traditions based by the plurality. We don't have more one God, but many gods and plurality. The, not more monotheism, but polytheism. This is a thesis of important theology and philosophy, German, and uh, he explained uh, this point. And Nietzsche, in his um, intent to overcome nihilism, he tried to have the new tradition, not more monotheism, but uh, plurality, the, the diver diversity, many gods, not one god, without capital letter, but in, in a small letter, we have many gods. We have different gods, and these different gods in war between themselves, because this is the life, the war. And in the world, you have the real life, because in each of the life is forces, is war, every time. In each time you have, you feeling the fullness of life. Fullness of life is the maximum of forces. You feeling in each time, in you live. This is the, the point we Nietzsche, uh, uh, Nietzsche would like to expose to us about the overcoming nihilism. And this, the, my, my answer of the question, I don't know if I, I answered. Diego, are you satisfied or? We want some uh, okay thank you professor Adilson. any other question or i have many but you know i mean i can talk uh very many times so <laughs> it's all maybe okay. maybe i can ask a question just for a change <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm also in on whatsapp so i can even make a and we can go philip <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure if this question is appropriate, maybe it's kind of weird, but uh, is uh, there a role of like a function for some kind of God for Nietzsche after nihilism? Like uh, probably not a monotheistic God, but maybe, I don't know, God in some sense, gods in the plural, I don't know. Thanks, Professor, and uh, thanks for the presentation. Okay, Gabriel, thank you for your question. Answer about the tradition, monotheism and polytheism. Nietzsche is trying to. Is yeah, sorry, so, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think uh, the microphone of uh, mm -hmm. Professor Nicole is open, so I cannot oh, hear you very well. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nietzsche tried to deep a new tradition. This tradition is based by polytheism. In the polytheism tradition, we don't have more. Uh, importance in morals. The 
the many uh, problems we have in that in these new traditions Nietzsche would like to found it by the ancient Greek is founded by forces. This is the kind uh, of thinking of Nietzsche. All in Nietzsche is based in forces. Forces uh, stay in all things, in nature, in human beings, plants, in all things you have forces. Forces is every time in war between them, between two kinds of fa of uh, situations in the life, and in each time you have you feeling a maximum of forces. Nietzsche says in his writings, in post uh, books writings. Uh, one kind is very important. I mentioned in my speech, God is a fulfill of life. This is the point. God is plural. God is not one, because we not don't need one person. When judge, we don't need one person who uh, obligate us to uh, fall in them. We need, we have many gods. We we need to have many forces against between them. For this reason, uh, Nietzsche mentions. God is plural. God not uh, not have more sense. The name of God in capital letter have no sense. But if you want to uh, persist in this idea, repeat many times: God, God, God. Okay have but is have no sense anymore if he if you repeat some things have normal sense you can deep the nihilistic tradition but the problem is the passive nihilism this is a problem nihilism as i said is a fate but we need to explore to deep uh, our dispositions to search the active nihilism, not passive nihilism. Passive nihilism created nothing. Active nihilism is uh, about our dispositions behind the nihilism tradition. In the nihilism tradition, the passive, in the active nihilism tradition, our dispositions is about this uh, nihilistic uh, tradition. We deep our psychology dispositions uh, to embrace the faith. Because, because the nihilism is don't change, is the faith. But the human being can change. We need to have the dispositions uh, with forces uh, to engage us in this nihilistic tradition. For this reason, with the monotheism traditions is not possible anymore. This is the answer of the Nietzsche. Thanks very much, Professor. Great, thank you. So, there are any other questions? So, ah, if you don't want to, like, you can write them, podem escrever em português aqui e vou traduzir para. O professor fala português. 
Até, okay. a, a pergunta em português, eu, tradu, eu respondo em português. Sim. Sim, sim, sim. <risos> Aliás, em italiano, traduzindo em português para o Brasil, para o português, para o nativo speaker em português, que vai ser fascinante. Mas eu posso traduzir em português para a audiência, que não é luso falante. Então, uma outra pergunta? Sim, eu tenho uma pergunta. Você pode me ouvir? Sim. Ok, então... I was thinking about what you just said, that the, the name of God in capital letter has no sense. Well, and my question is, do you think that Nietzsche can truly dismiss any concept of God or does he merely replace the Christian concept of God with an alternative concept of God, namely the will to power? So, there are at least two reasons for believing the latter uh, hypothesis. And the first one is that, look, the postulation of the will to power is ontologically extremely problematic. It's just as problematic as the existence of the Christian God in, 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 the, in, like, uh, in, the, in the Juju, in the Jewish uh, Christian tradition. And the second one, the second reason for thinking that the will to power I mean, there are other reasons, but the two, the, the two core ones, I think, are those. The second reason is that um, the will to power seems to serve in Nietzsche's works as an ultimate criterion to deal with all disputes, just like the Christian God did in the Christian tradition. I mean, it seems that in the end, this, this libertarian principle that is supposed to express what's more unique about yourself uh, plays more or less a similar role that the principle, the egalitarian principle that you should always please others, act in agreement with the community, played in the Christian tradition. So uh, I wonder uh, what you think about it. Does he really dismiss any concept of God or just replace it with the will to power? Thank you for the question. <laughs> I think uh, the, the, the point is he in certain times, in certain uh, writings, he dismissed this concept of God. The, the concept of God has no sense. He explained openly this in many works. But in another works, he explained the God have a meaning. God in capital letter, yes. But uh, God is a point, not just one point, but a plural of points of force. You mentioned uh, the will to power. This is a very good um, example we have to mention about uh, this um, comparison to God in capital letter, Be because uh, will to power composed by many things, by plural forces in war between them. This is God. And we can ask, God is, is the man is the man who surface him, who overcome himself. <laughs> yes, we need to overcome himself. Psychology, we need to overcome himself. We can create forces by our dispositions. For this reason, we can link it by the first questions uh, Nicola had the nihilistic tradition. Nihilistic traditions uh, look, uh, explore to deep the many situations we have in, in our lives. We need to embrace, we need to live with all, all of power. Yes? And for this reason, uh, Nietzsche says different uh, answers about the questions. 
because in we have a traditional comprehensive of the rights of Nietzsche, uh, three steps. In these three steps of journey of writing in Nietzsche, we have different times, different visions about many things. God is one example. But um, traditionally in the Nietzsche research, we have, uh, we have many more attention in the third step. In the third step, Nietzsche says, God in capital letter is no sense because God is plural. God is forces in war. God is something inside the human being. God is our dispositions to search the new life, to looking for the new ways in the nihilistic times. This is a, the, 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 the point Nietzsche uh, uh, point. Uh, put in his uh, writings, especially in the third step of uh, his writings. Thank you. Perfect. So I think we have room for just another question because, uh, so is there any other question? I think that's it until. So thanks again, Professor Feiler. Thank you very much. It's been a kind of challenge. At the beginning, the people were shy, but then he started to. Again, if uh, you want to rise uh, to ask a question, please feel free either raising your hands, uh, your random teams, or you can write them in the chat. Or if you don't feel like uh, <clears throat> speaking or writing in English, you can write them in Portuguese and then we can uh, uh, translate for our guests from uh, abroad. So no problem at all. OK, thanks again, Professor Adilson, for this interesting chat, uh, for this interesting talk. Okay.